crib for a bed The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay The little Lord Jesus asleep on the Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's service. I feel as if I should do a little bit of a countdown at the start of the service today. This is the third day of January. It's the second Sunday in the season of Christmas, and it is, of course, the first Sunday of a new year. So can I take the opportunity to wish you a very happy new year and God's blessing throughout 2021. In many ways, we hope that this new year will bring better things than the year past as we maybe emerge from the coronavirus pandemic. But we simply entrust this new year into God's hands and seek his guidance and his blessing for it. In our service today, we have a sermon from the Bishop, Bishop David Maclay, and he has asked that this new year sermon be used in every parish throughout the diocese today. I've also included some pre-recorded clips that were recorded in the church and some prayers and hymns uh, for the new year and also for the season of Christmas. So we're going to begin our worship by singing together a hymn that reminds us of the turning of the years. The hymn, Lord for the Years. Let's worship God as we sing this together. I hope you'll join in.
at the start of a service, we often take the opportunity to remember our own shortcomings before God and to seek his forgiveness. In our prayer of confession today, we seek God's forgiveness for our failings of the past year and seek his guidance and his blessing for the year ahead. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come together on the threshold of another year, we're conscious of the many ways we have failed you over the year gone by. You have given us innumerable blessings, and all too often we have failed to appreciate them. You have offered us daily guidance, and repeatedly we have ignored it. You have provided countless opportunities for service, and we have frittered many of them away. You have granted us new life in Christ, and time and time again, we have turned back to our old foolish ways. Father, forgive what we have been and direct what we shall be. Despite our high hopes and bold pledges, despite our talk of faith and words about commitment, we have at times been weak or disobedient or self-centered or faithless. Our discipleship a sorry catalogue of what might have been. We want to serve you but the flesh is weak. We want to obey you but temptation is strong. We want to trust you but doubts are many. We want to do much but end up doing little. Father, Forgive what we have been and direct what we shall be. And gracious God, we stand on the threshold of another year, a new beginning, a fresh chapter. May this sense of newness be echoed in our lives as through your grace we start again with a clean slate, the past put behind us the future beckoning, beckoning us forward. Help us to live each day as your gift, nurtured by the love of Christ, renewed through your Holy Spirit. And so may we live to your praise and glory. Father, forgive what we have been and direct what we shall be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. This morning our sermon is by Bishop David Maclay. Indeed, the bishop has asked that this sermon would be used in every parish throughout the diocese today at the start of a new year. The sermon is based on some words from Ephesians chapter 1. And so our reading is from Ephesians 1 beginning at verse 3. The Apostle Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfilment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. See amid the winter snow Born for us on earth below See the gentle Lamb appears Promised from eternal years Hail that ever-blessed morn Hail redemption's happy dawn Sing through all Jerusalem Christ is born in Bethlehem Say All the years that I was a rector, I, I liked if I could, and it wasn't always possible to be around and in the pulpit on the first Sunday in January. There's something, I think, very opportunistic about the first Sunday of a new year. It provides much more than just opportunities for New Year resolutions. There's something poignant for us about moving from one year to another year. And for those, for example, who have been bereaved during the year that's passed, the year 2020, moving from 2020 into 2021 will be moving from a year where your loved one was part of the year that's passed, but will no longer be physically present in any way during the year that lies ahead. That can be painful and can be very poignant. There are other things that we choose to lay before God and hand over to God at the end of an old year and at the start of a new year. Things that we choose to put behind us. Things that we choose to ask God to deal with in our lives. More than even any of that, we should 
use and move into a new year as a people who are seeking to be full of faith and full of courage and a people who are trusting and believing in God, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. A new year is an opportunity for us to embrace all that God has in store for us. This morning's reading is from Ephesians chapter 1 is full of so much that we should want to hear at the start of a new year. Truths that we should really want to grasp and make our own at the start of a new year. John Stott describes these opening verses of Ephesians chapter 1 as a kaleidoscope of dazzling lights and shifting colors. Another writer likens these verses to a snowball tumbling down a hill, picking up volume as it descends. John Mackey compares these verses to the overture of an opera, which contains the successive melodies that are to follow. And so this morning, first of all, our sights in these verses are lifted towards God the Father and the blessings that flow from God the Father and of whom God our Father is the source. Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 4, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. As we move into a new year, God is our Father. And our Father God is the source of all the blessings that are in store for us in this new year and indeed throughout the remainder of our, of our lives. James summed it up in a similar sort of way in uh, chapter 1 of his epistle. He said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. As we move into a new year, these verses make it clear that our status as God's children is God's gift to us. In verse 4, we're reminded that God chose us. Paul here goes on to remind us that our friendship and our relationship with God is God's gift to us. Verse 5, he predestined us. The riches of our being and of our living and of our belonging and of our knowing God are, are God's gift to us. Verse 6, he has lavished us with his grace. He has lavished us with his goodness. He's poured his goodness out upon us and our futures are in his hand. Even the gift of eternal life itself and abundant life right here and now are God's gift to us. They, they come freely to us from the Father who blesses us. And such blessings that are ours have been entrusted to us, they've been given to us, but not without responsibility. We are blessed in order that we might bless many around us and be a blessing to others around us. So as we commence a new year, let's choose in our churches to be those who bless others, who in knowing that we are blessed by our Father God, choose to be a blessing. Choose to be a blessing by, for example, being generous and, uh, and those of us who can give in this new year, being those who do give really generously so that we bless people in our churches, we bless others in our communities and in our parishes, that we as a church are a blessing in our nation and are a blessing to our world. Having come to know God as Father, as those who have been chosen by him, those upon whom he has lavished his grace and his kindness, 
those whom he has given to us grace to believe and grace to trust in him and grace to know him and grace to receive his gift of life and all its fullness and grace to experience the blessings that he showers upon us, the blessings of eternal life. Let's be those who really treasure that privilege and know that we have been blessed and therefore choose to bless others with the blessings that we have received. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. I love the stories that the Reverend Jim Ray, a retired Methodist minister, has recently put together in a book that he has just very recently published. And uh, in one of those stories, Jim tells a, a lovely little story of how in the 1980s and the 1990s he was a, a motorcycle enthusiast. He, he, he writes humorously, not that my 150cc hybrid scooter would have made any impact at the Ulster Grand Prix. But he tells a story of how on his way back from Scarborough Cricket Festival that he decided to, to change his route and travel home via the west coast of England, rather the east coast of England. Uh, and about 50 miles from Arbroath, he, he writes this, uh, about 50 miles from Arbroath, I stopped at a roadside hot food van for a cup of tea. I noticed a young man, probably in his early 20s, standing looking into the hedge as he drank his tea or coffee. I noticed his small motorcycle, a Honda 90. Suddenly, something prompted me to go and offer him a tenner. I thought he might consider me mad, so I gently approached him and said, you may find this very strange, but I've just been prompted to give you a ten pound note. The guy looked at me and smiled. He then told me that he was unemployed and was on his way to Arbroath to a job interview. I'm almost out of petrol, he said. I have no money. I am praying to God that something would turn up. Jim continues in the story to tell us I couldn't believe it. I wished him well and gave him the money with my visiting card, hoping that he would get the job. A few weeks passed, I got a letter from him explaining that he was a Christian and a member of a church in Yorkshire. He had got the job in one of Arbroath's fish processing companies. He was amazed at how his prayer was answered and he thanked me. It's a bit of an out there story, isn't it? But we've got a, an out there God who does out there things. And we're blessed by our Father God and we're called out of our blessings to be a blessing. Secondly, these verses of Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 Tell us about Jesus. Paul keeps on talking in these verses and keeps on naming Jesus. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Verse 5, He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. And Paul, in the verses that follow, continue, actually, I think about 11 times, he, he tells us, in him we are believers, in him we are saints, in him we are blessed, in him we are chosen, in him we have grace, in him we have redemption, in him we have forgiveness, in him we are sealed as those who belong to Jesus Christ. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan for this planet Earth. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan for Ireland. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan for our parishes. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan for our families. And that's a humbling thing. It's not something to be proud of, but it's something that we should see as privilege as incredible privilege. Because of Jesus, we're blessed. So as we move into 2021, 
the name Jesus should be on our lips. We need to be telling people about Jesus in 2021. We need to be introducing people to Jesus in 2021. Malcolm Muggeridge was a, a journalist. He became a Christian and uh, he, he spoke at all sorts of gatherings and uh, he was an intellectual and he was invited often to speak on all sorts of subjects. Uh, he, he writes, I used to be invited but not so much now because my message is always the same. Come to Jesus. Come to Christ. I get asked, what are the issues facing the Russians? And I answer, they must come to Christ. The Palestinians, the Israelis, they must come to Christ. The British, the Irish, the rich, the poor, they need to come to Christ. They need to come to Jesus. Whoever we are, we're invited to come to Christ. And the church in 2021 and always needs to be a church that calls people to follow Jesus Christ. God, and I pray he will, may take us to new places and to different places and in different directions in 2021. But in all those places and in all those directions, may God anoint us and equip us and give us the courage and the boldness to call and to invite people to come to Christ. And thirdly, these verses of Paul challenge us to set our hearts, to focus our minds on the things that are of the Spirit, the things that are of the Holy Spirit, verses 13 and 14. In him you also when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. God wants to bless us. That doesn't mean that 2021 will be a straightforward year or an easy year or without its challenges or without its pains or without its difficulties, without its disappointments without its moments of, of, of deep sadness or, or, or grief or loss. But in all of that and through all of that, in 2021, God will want to bless us with every spiritual blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ, when we're found in Christ, People are blessed, blessed by God the Father, blessed by God the Son, and blessed by God the Holy Spirit. And in our uncertain world, as we move into 2021, let's bless those around us. Let's be those who receive the blessings of God, so that we are, out of the overflow of our hearts and lives, those that are a blessing to those around us. And in a deeper way, know the blessing of the blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. And out of that blessed assurance, live lives that point people to Jesus. In our uncertain world, let's be humble followers of Jesus Christ. In a world of arrogance and of pride, let's, let's be different. Let's be like him. And we're given a picture of him by Paul in Philippians, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And he done all of this, did all of this to make us his sons and his daughters. Not slaves or those whose lives lack purpose or direction. Verse 10, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. The gospel of Jesus Christ brings people together, unites people. Let's in 2021 
work to see people reconciled to Christ and to each other. Because one day, colour or race or language will no longer separate the redeemed church of God gathered before his throne in heaven. John in Revelation chapter 7 gives us a picture of that church. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. No arguments there. No arguments then over skin color or over nationality. No walls then that divide, but all one in Christ Jesus. So as the church moves into 2021, as we move forward into a new year, let's choose to set aside prejudice of race or prejudice of nationality or of politics or of language. And let's, in the church, make the main thing the main thing. Proclaiming Christ. Proclaiming Christ faithfully to the nations. Proclaiming Christ faithfully to this nation. We're one expression of God's church in Ireland. We're not the only expression. We may not even be the best expression. But we are the church of Ireland in Ireland. Positioned in parish communities. Uh, with some diocesan missional areas and uh, with all sorts of opportunities to proclaim Christ and to bring people to Christ, to lead people to Jesus. Stott said, there's no wall between the church and the world. Yet many Christians meet behind the walls of church buildings and ecclesiastical traditions. Let's, in 2021, make sure that we answer God's call and become God's people and God's church that point people towards our God. God the Father who loved us. God the Son, Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us. God the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies us. And let's invite him to visit our communities and our churches in 2021. In 2021, in all our parishes and in all our lives, let's put evangelism at the very top of our agenda. Because as someone that I knew well used to say, if it's not at the top, it falls off the bottom. I want to pray that we would know God's blessings, all of us, in this new year of 2021. Our communities and our parishes and many people around us have lives that are groaning. Our country is groaning. Our world is groaning. But, but, God blesses us to be a blessing. The psalmist said, Blessed be the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. That's God's call for his church in 2021. Stott again said it is because of God's gracious will to save that evangelism has any hope of success and faith becomes possible. So friends, we preach Christ we welcome God's Holy Spirit's presence and we demonstrate the love and the compassion of our Father God. And we do it all for God's glory. Paul here concludes in verse 14. We acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. 
you may recognize the words of a song that's often used at rugby matches uh, in these islands. Ireland, Ireland together standing tall, shoulder to shoulder we'll answer Ireland's call. I'd like to insert there in that last line, Ireland, Ireland, together standing tall, shoulder to shoulder, we'll answer in 2021 Christ's call. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that you've positioned us in family and in church families and in communities and that you've entrusted to us the most privileged call to share with those around us the blessings that we have received from our generous, loving Heavenly Father to proclaim Christ and to proclaim Jesus Christ faithfully to our world. And to pray that in the power of God the Holy Spirit, our lives and our communities would be saturated, would be soaked with the love of Christ in Christ Jesus our Lord. That many in this year would believe in him. That our churches would become strong for him and for his glory. And that lives and communities would be transformed by the power of his gospel. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
which now be angels sing. For our affirmation of faith at Christmas time, we use the opening words of John's Gospel, very often known as the Christmas Gospel or John's Prologue. And so we'll say together In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through Him all things were made, without Him, Nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of us all. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And we pray as Christ our Lord commanded. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. And as we pray, today we remember before God those who are on our hearts and those who perhaps are in need of special prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you those whom we remember in our hearts today those who need the touch of your hand and your blessing. For those who are ill, Lord, we pray for your healing hand to restore them to health. For those who are facing difficulties, we pray for your grace and your strength. For those who have recently been bereaved, we ask, Lord, that you would give them your comfort and your peace. All this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray too to the Lord for the year past and the year ahead. Lord, despite the difficulties of the year past, we still have much to give you thanks for. Indeed, we thank you for all that you have brought us through, for all the grace and strength that you have given us, the mercy that you have shown us. And as we entrust the year ahead into your hands, we pray, Lord, that you would be with us throughout 2021. As we pray for the year ahead, I'll ask you to join in with a response. At the end of each petition, the response is simply, Lord, Take what we are and direct what we shall be. And so we pray, loving God, at the turn of another year and the start of another chapter in the life of our church, we come to you seeking your guidance and committing ourselves once again to your service. We come to you to share with you and with one another to offer our thanks and our praise, our confession, our need of forgiveness, to bring you our hopes and fears for the future and to learn more of your purpose for our lives. Lord, take what we are and direct what we shall be. Lord, help us to make the most of the year ahead to use each day to the full, enjoying each one, celebrating your many blessings and bringing honour to you 
through the way we live each day. Lord, take what we are and direct what we shall be. And Lord, throughout this coming year, help us to make proper time for ourselves, time to work, rest, play and reflect. Help us to make time for our loved ones, time to give them the love, support and care they deserve. Help us to make time for others, to listen, encourage, serve and share. Help us to make time for you, to read your word, to offer our prayers, to seek your will and to respond to your calling. Lord, take what we are and direct what we shall be. Loving God, we come to you at the start of another year. Speak to us now and help us to hear your voice. Lead us and help us to see your hand. Teach us and help us to know your will. Send us out into the year ahead and help us to walk by faith in the knowledge that as you have been with us in the years gone by, so you will continue to guide and bless us in the days ahead. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation has gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace this Christmas season. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. Receive the King Let every heart Prepare Him room And Him and nature sing And Him and nature sing And heaven and Him and nature sing Joy to the world, the same sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness of his love